Hello, hello, and good day, everyone. Welcome to Dragon Deeds and Gates Glitz Tutorial, Episode 75, Part 2, where we are going to access the rooftop balcony, as well as getting Arak inside the palace. With that being said, let's go ahead and start things off with accessing the rooftop palace, which we are first and foremost going to drop down here. To note, we don't need to access the hidden area uh, to the tower. We actually only need to be up here in order to access the roof. So even though that kind of makes that one hidden area kind of useless, uh, it's still a hidden area nonetheless. Now to access the roof, we can either go to the left, run on through, or we can go to the right and run on through. From here, we can just uh, backflip up to here. It does take a little bit of effort, but going up to here, and we can either be able to jump normally up to here and be able to access the roof, or it may take a, quite a bit of effort, but eventually you'll be able to make your way up to the invisible ledge. However, once up there, you may actually be too far to do a sideways tunnel flip in which we'll actually need to apply the ring glide glitch in order to access the higher roof. Once up here, we're going to make our way to one of the corners. Then we will perform a backflip to get up to the corner here to be able to access the uh, higher part of the roof. I find that setting Rin's back up to the center of the corner here allows Rin to have an easier time getting up to the top here by having her slide into the perfect spot that allows her to get up to this location. So this is about the highest that you can get at least in the PAL version of the game. Because any attempt to try to get up past here, even with a backflip, will be met, met with the wall, which will cause Ren to fall down here because this part of the roof is not solid. Uh, so in any attempt to jump, we'll have her fall on through. In the American version of the game, we can actually access the balcony by using the Ren Glide glitch. We can use either the tower to the right or the tower to our left. What we want to do is basically aim roughly at the corner and access an invisible ledge. From here, we will perform the ring glide glitch again to be able to access the balcony, everyone. The rooftop balcony, the highest balcony that we can actually get in the castle of Zerdana. And look at this view. Heck, we don't even need a cannon to get up here. In fact, it makes me feel like uh, I would be seeing a certain green dinosaur uh, to give me like 100 lives or at least maybe 100 invulnerability potions and or invisibility potions. <laughs> to access higher even still, we just want to backflip up to here, admire the backdrop out here, and then we can backflip up to here. Again, we can do this on the other side as well and we can access a higher part of the roof. Accessing the tallest spike will give us one of the best views in the game in my opinion. We can skip the first spike by backflipping up to the second spike, and then we can just do a normal standing jump, tilt the control stick forward to access this spike here, in which we can pan view here to give one of the best views in the game, given that most obstructions aside from the castle was out of view, and, of course, I haven't reverted back to Jade's Emporium uh, since episode, episode 73, <laughs> as it's still missing. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on. We can simply jump up here to access probably the highest point that we can really get to right now. Um, because, oh, oh, heck, I can actually do that. Nice. I'm glad I recorded that. There is an invisible legend for us to access. I haven't been able to find that. No, I have. Jumping up to here will gives us access to another hidden area inside, inside the main tower. This is another hidden area that you can only access from up here. And this is basically the highest point that we can actually access uh, with Rin here in Sardana, at least so far for now. Since a new discovery by Introverted Owl allows uh, Rin to fly through the air, we may have some other possibilities that can actually happen. But right now, from here, we could probably uh, do that to access the towers. But for right now, that's not what I'm going to be doing here. 
So we have... Locked. Oh, wow. Oh! <laughs> it's locked. Of course it's locked. There's nothing to really open down there. Well, that was interesting. What I wanted to show here is basically on the front here is a false front. There's actually no solid floor past beyond this point that I'm standing on right here. Any Anything right there is a false front and you'll fall through, at least on this roof. However, if we stay on the inside of this and not go uh, out there, we can actually access another kind of hidden area. Uh, uh, here and I do want to note see we got an invisible floor below us uh, However, uh, with that we can actually uh, let's we'll just equip a sword uh, Do who turn and we teleport down? Uh, I think I remembered saying something about invisible ledges and stuff Well teleport are you down to the nearest uh, invisible barrier? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, apparently, yes, I was wrong on that, on that assumption and that rule I stated, which is not the case, as the exception of that rule right there. That not necessarily all invisible uh, platforms uh, are solid enough to hold Rin and her who turn in place. So with that being said, there uh, there is actually a really good uh, differentiation between uh, the types of platforms that Rin can fall through with the Who turn, and that was discussed in uh, Introverted Al's uh, video, his latest video, where he's flying through the air with Rin, uh, which again I'll share a description in the a link down below here as well, uh, but uh, has a particular description as to the type of platforms uh, that uh, exist in uh, Direct Needs Gates, which I will discuss later, pro probably in episode 77, when I explore uh, these this new glitch in depth. I also want to showcase uh, the other uh, three corners of the roof to be able to access the hidden area of the main tower and be able to showcase what their locations and uh, position Rin needs to be in in order to access it. Speaking of hidden areas, going back to over here, we can actually perform a turn here to actually access just above the entrance uh, to the palace. Here, we can actually jump up over here, or... Come on, get up. Up, Rin. There we go. You can get and climb up on top of here. Again, there's not really much that we can do here. We can't go here, we can't leave out of there. Though the only way we can actually leave out of here is uh, rolling this way, press select, and then spam uh, backflips to try to get Ren out. Just do en enough over time and she will eventually get out of here. And there we go. Going up to here, we can access a hidden platform by basically just jumping at an angle here, fall through, and land right here. This is on the opposite side of what's basically the top of the throne room over there. Uh, running off in this direction will lead us to a pitfall down to that uh, slope that will take us down to there, which then we can access the ground over there to then access the treasure room. Um... Uh, we can also run out over here to these uh, corners of the front over here. Basically, this side over here, we can basically uh, access back to the roof. Of course, if we perform a hoot turn here, we will actually be able to access the top uh, of the entrance, just like we did earlier. And we can actually run through to here, uh, accessing uh, this portion of the uh, entrance. Uh, however, we, much like before, we can't actually uh, exit out this way and have to do exit out the way I showed you. Using arrows to map out the edge so we can get as close as possible, we can also use a ring glide glitch to access the uh, hidden platform. Try as we might, we can't access the roofs of the towers here. Uh, and also, on the right tower, we can't actually access the hidden area that I want to, at least not until I use another glitch to. But I did want to note that I did forget to mention in the last uh, episode that there's actually an invisible platform in addition to this hidden area that we can explore on. 
So even though we can't access the roof, we can uh, pan the camera into here to show off basically a hidden attic of the tower. Now we can't actually access this tower, even if we utilize a new glitch that can allow Ren to fly. Uh, but we can at least admire the hidden area that we can actually perceive from this current location. Even if we utilize the highest point of the castle at the furthest most edge to then maximize the Ren Glide Glitch, we still can't access the roof here because it's intangible and also on further investigation there's actually invisible barrier protecting the first roof of both towers. We can also use the rooftop balcony to access the west exterior balcony. There's another uh, fourth way of actually accessing this balcony. And that's really all there is to talk about the rooftop balcony. Though before we actually talk about getting Arak inside the palace, there is one more thing. Skydiving of the building! It's despicably genius! So now we are going to have Arak bypass into the castle here. Now, all we gotta do essentially is uh, go up to this side of the castle here. I think you might be able to do it on the other side of the castle, but I don't really want to waste too much of my time trying to experiment with this because it does uh, have it's it's a bit difficult to do uh, because what we want, want to basically be able to do is ascend with our descend at our and keep spamming that while we are using tank controls just strifing to the uh, right here so we want to strife right into the building here and so we're just going to spam uh, uh, like well triangle X Triangle X. Triangle X. Triangle X. Oh, this is working beautifully. Yes! This is working! And we just keep spamming that. Keep holding uh, L2 and the control stick to the right. I can't believe I was able to do this first try here. On showing you guys an example. Because usually his right wing will try to push you out. You just gotta rinse and repeat. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, a little more. Yes, there we go. Woohoo! We are finally in the castle. Let's save the game. Now that we've saved the game, we can explore the castle without a worry. To get out of this one spot, we want to go to the corner here, fly up, and then descend back down with Arak. We're going to basically use the same strategy we used to get in the castle in the first place. And we're looking to, for Arak to turn dark, which is where he would be in the exterior of the castle. And here, we can finally explore the castle. Now, one thing to note in particular, there is some limiting... Like, we can walk around, however... We cannot freely fly inside here. At least not from inside the castle normally. There are a couple of places in which we can, but for the most part in this area here, we can't actually fly up. And if we cross the point of the corridor that leads to the throne room, Arak can't actually go back that way. But there's two places in which we can explore, one on the right and one on the left. Starting with the left first, we are going to strafe down to here by pressing uh, triangle and X, and then we're going to make our way over here. We have two uh, paths we can take. We can go up here to the right, which will uh, allow us to be able to access the uh, roof of the throne room. Once when you're able to get Arak uh, to land, we can actually explore the top of the uh, roof of the throne room. And also the showcase here, we can actually call Arak and have him still be able to land up here. Yes, this is a uh, area Arak can land on. Now, if you want to get him out of here, here's one way you can get him out. Though let's first and foremost show basically what not to do. If you haven't got Arak as close as the wall as possible, you're going to run into a little issue where Arak can't actually get out himself. Because keep in mind, he tends to fly in circles when you uh, call him. At least he has, yeah, he has a tendency to do so. So keep that in mind in that you want to call him when he's close enough to a wall that he would collide into with it. And uh, not have the opportunity to actually push himself back in. So again, it just makes it more difficult for him to leave because he can still leave. He can still leave. It's just a lot harder to do so. 
Now, going back to retrieve Arok here, since he decided to land in here instead of leave, uh, let me show you exactly what to do. So I'm going to make sure that I'm as close to the wall as possible. Again, this will work with any, as long as you're close to any of the walls inside here. You call Arok, and then you move over, and then you call Arok again, and that should basically uh, be able to get Arok out of there. And there he is! Uh, just make sure, yeah, any wall inside the castle, any wall inside of any area to get Eric into, you can call him and he should be able to leave on his own if he's able to fly. Speaking of getting Eric out, if we choose to go to the left side, we can actually get Eric right out of here. We just gotta get Eric up close to the ledge here and then we can just simply take off and get out of here. Let's go! Now this works because we're utilizing what we learned in part one, where there is no outer limit that connects here. And with that, we'll just send Ren into free fall. Thus, we're able to escape the palace with Arok. Choosing the path to the right allows us to access the basement area with Arok. Now, there are a few things we can do here. One of the things that we can do is be able to access the throne room floor. And we can fly up as high as we want because uh, the basement area allows Arok to do so, unlike the main castle area. Trying to land here will land us on the floor with the throne room, and then we can really move around and explore all throughout the throne room, though limiting as it is given uh, Arox and cumbersome size. Uh, but this does give me some ideas as I saved, uh, I did a save where I was in here with Arox while still having the uh, Zolodane interrogation cutscene yet to be activated. Arak won't attack Zola in the cutscene, however, but I did splice together some of the most hilarious positions uh, I put Arak in, and I hope you all enjoy the show. This is madness! Zola, think of what you're doing! You betray your very humanity! Humanity is an overvalued concept, Mishala. Power, that is the true virtue. Now tell me, because I grow tired of this, can the Dragon Mother be controlled? Can she be compelled to serve? Put her down, Dane. It's over. It most certainly is, but not for me. You've avoided our trap so far through dumb luck and circumstance, but no more. You'll not escape here, Dane. You're finished. Am I? You think you can save this city? You'll fail here as you failed before. Look what became of your own people. Your own Be brother. Quiet, damn you. That's enough. <laughs> now to get our back to the main floor so we can continue our exploration, what we got to do here is simply just do the same thing that we did to get into the palace, which is strafe and spam the... Uh, ascend and then descend with Arak to have him land back down. Heck, this might as well be its own glitch at this point. Uh, being able to uh, spam up, down while strafing into a wall to get access when we otherwise can't. Continuing on, we can access the basement with Arak as a per normal, almost just like with Rin. However, we can't just simply walk down here as what Rin can do. Uh, but we can have Arak fly to access the lowest part of the basement to continue our exploration. Now, the one thing though, Arak can't actually leave here just like Rin does because he's too big to utilize this location. But it also begs the question, why would I need to do so in the first place when he can fly? It kind of reminds me of a joke with Team Four Star made with Piccolo in uh, 17 fight, going like, uh, why are you walking? To pop up to the second floor. You can fly! <laughs> but in any case, uh, there's also one more thing I want to show you guys here is if you turn Arak invisible, you can actually access almost any part of the interior castle you want to. But keep in mind you're at the mercy of the p parameters of the palace itself. So sometimes... These parameters, when you interact with them, can punt Arak even below the castle, as I'll show you into one situation I happened upon. If we get him to be invisible, we can actually ascend beyond our limits to anywhere we want. Speaking of anywhere we want... Oh. Oh my gosh. Where am I? No, do not make me fly up. 
No, I wanted to explore that whatever happened there. Wow. Feel free to explore this phenomena yourself. Though, keep in mind that uh, moving around with a visible arrow and tampering it with too much can and will eventually crash the game. So keep it that in mind when you're exploring this phenomena. So aside from having Arak be pushed underneath the castle, we can utilize an invisible Arak to access the central tower. However, we can do so without the invisible Arak. Just come down right here, and we can fly up here. And as soon as we get to the max, we can go ahead and save the game. And upon completion of said save, we can rotate Arak, and we can be inside the tower here, at least as high as we can get to at this point in time. This, uh... Now, Arak is stuck, and he can not He can move around uh, in a fixed position, but he can't actually ascend or descend, so he is stuck. So keep that in mind when exploring this part of the glitch. But I just like that I can do so without having to resort to an invisible Arak. Thus, I can avoid the risk of freezing the game. If we want to return to the main floor, all we got to do is strafe over here and strafe uh, down to here. Going down to here will allow us to be back on the main floor and we can ex uh, continue exploring the castle however we want. The only thing left to do now is to have Arak loaded into the palace. And to do that, we've already did the first part is bypass in here with Arak, and then we'll load in the palace on top of him. And that should get him now inside the palace. The only thing, like... I, it's impossible really to get Arak inside uh, the palace when it's loaded in already. But why would you do that in the first place when this is so much easier? And given that you don't have any additional walls to deal with. Speaking of additional walls and rules, uh, we still can't fly with Arak. So in addition to uh, everything that you could do from there, we just have additional walls preventing Arak's freedom of movement. But the tricky part is is going to get Arak loaded in to the throne room. So what we need to do here is basically fly up to here, strafe into the wall, uh, and then descend down. This will make it sure Arak gets onto the second floor. And then we go as far as we can and not underneath the doorway of what the balcony would be. And then make our way out over to here and try to uh, uh, load in the thing. The problem is, is that Arak has a tendency to fly away because we're at the perfect distance uh, away from Arak for him to start flying away. So the idea is to get Arak as close as we can as possible without him flying away, but not so close that we find ourselves underneath the door to the balcony here. Because we'll come around the corner to find Arak stuck to the wall, and no matter how hard we try, we can't get him out of said wall. So it's a good idea to make an additional save when you're on the throne room floor so that you can make the proper adjustments to be able to have Arak loaded into the throne room without him flying away. You want to be about roughly this far this far away from the uh, balcony door to make sure Arak won't fly away. And you want to be a roughly about this far away in order to load in the palace. However, you don't need a loading disc in order to load in the palace. Here we should have Arak be enough distance away from the wall that he should be able to freely walk around, and uh, yes, we're able to pop him up and explore the throne room from here. But you might have some difficulty in performing this, in which I think an easier way to do it is have uh, Arak tilted at an angle and then jump off him. However, you might encounter an invisible Rin as we touch an outer limit that's connected both to the uh, castle floor and the basement area. What we gotta do here is essentially either we're going to uh, perform a sideways tunnel flip uh, to have Grin glide towards the uh, entrance and then pop out eventually, or we can just simply aim the, aim the camera down when we jump off of Arak and avoid the outer limit entirely. All in all, we're able to get on Arak and be able to explore the throne room to some limited capacity as we still can't fly or anything, but we're able to uh, walk around and uh, be able to explore here with Arak to some certain extent. I can't get past this point right here, but it gives me some ideas of load having the uh, palace loaded in on top of Arak and maybe interact with the cuts. The very first uh, uh, cutscene we have with Mashala. What it will be like if I'm on Arak uh, and that cutscene's activated? No. Well, in any case, um, 
we're not actually able to really have Arak walk down the stairs, but we can encounter some brief instances of his super speed. But on a final note, well, more reminder than anything, is that whenever we load in the interior of a location such as the palace, we can lose control of Arak if we pan the camera outside of an outer limit. However, there's very few outer limits inside the castle that you can encounter when you're loaded into the palace, so just, just simply make another save and have fun exploring and experimenting however you want. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the rooftop balcony, where we are here to enjoy our rooftop experience during the evening hours. Sure, it's not a starry night sky. Sure, the most of the place is shrouded in darkness. And sure, there is a blazing sun that is still there that kind of takes away from the experience a little bit. But by gosh, we have imagination and we can just imagine ourselves in this situation being out here on a huge, huge rooftop, extending with a huge balcony being able to enjoy the evening atmosphere here in Zardana. With that being said, that's it for this episode. And for next episode, we're going to be... Uh, basically, it's going to be a random assortment of glitch glitches, which is going to be a whole collage of them. Uh, some of them are even add-ons to from the previous episodes that I recently discovered and that need to be showcased before we get into Stratos. And then, followed by that episode, we're going to be talking about the, uh, we're going to be talking about the new groundbreaking glitch that's basically sweeping as I sweep, either sweeping across the dragon, the edge of gates, or it's going to sweep the whole dragon community. I, I want to make sure it does because the glitch uh, showcase in the previous episode that I will leave a link to the video in the description down below for you guys to look at the original poster of it, the original discoverer of it. Give credit to Introverted Al for he has discovered probably the most fun glitch and I wish, I wish this was discovered way back when. Oh my gosh, how much fun we all would have had flying through the air. But for those who are still able to play the game, for us who are going to eventually be playing the game again, have fun. <laughs> With that being said, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and as always, have a great life, everyone. How it feels to chew five gum. Yes! 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 Yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! New five gum. Stimulate your senses.